The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Generics. Generic code enables you to write flexible, reusable functions and types that can work with any type subject to requirements that you define. You can write code that avoids duplication and expresses its intent in a clear, abstracted manner. Generics are one of the most powerful features of Swift, and much of the Swift standard library is built with generic code. In fact, you've been using generics throughout the language guide, even if you did not realize it. For example, Swift's array and dictionary types are both generic collections. You can create an array that holds int values, or an array that holds string values, or indeed an array for any other type that can be created in Swift. Similarly, you can create a dictionary to store values of any specified type, and there are no limitations on what that type can be. The problem that generics solve. Here is a standard non-generic function called swap two ints, which swaps two integer values. This function makes use of in-out parameters to swap the values of a and b as described in in-out parameters. The swap to ints function swaps the original value of b into a and the original value of a into b. You can call this function to swap in two integer values. The swap to ints function is useful, but it can only be used with integer values. If you want to swap two string values or two double values, you have to write more functions, such as the swap to strings and swap to double functions shown here. You may have noticed that the bodies of swap to ints, swap to strings, and swap to doubles functions are identical. The only difference is the type of the values that they accept, int, string, and double. It is more useful and considerably more flexible to write a single function that swaps two values of any type. Generic code enables you to write such a function. A generic version of these functions is defined below. Note, in all three functions, the types of a and b must be the same. If a and b are not of the same type, it is not possible to swap their values. Swift is a type-safe language and does not allow, for example, a variable of type string and a variable of type double to swap values with each other. Attempting to do so results in a compile time error. Generic functions can work with any type. Here is a generic version of the swap to ints function from above called swap to values. The body of swap to values function is identical to the body of the swap to ints function. However, the first line of swap to values is slightly different from swap to ints. Here's how the first two lines compare. The generic version of the function uses a placeholder type name called t in this case instead of an actual type name such as int, string, or double. The placeholder type name does not say anything about what t must be, but it does say that both a and b must be of the same type t, whatever t represents. The actual type to use in place of t is determined each time the swap two values function is called. The other difference between a generic function and a non-generic function is that generic's function name swap two values is followed by the placeholder type name t inside angle brackets. The brackets tell Swift that t is a placeholder type name within the swap two values function definition. Because t is a placeholder, Swift does not look for an actual type called t. Swap two values function can now be called in the same way as swap two ints, except that it can be passed two values of any type as long as both of these values are of the same type as each other. Each time swap two values is called, the type to use for t is inferred from the types of values passed to the function. In these two examples, t is inferred to be int and string, respectively. Note, swap two values function defined here is inspired by a generic function called swap, which is part of the Swift standard library and is automatically made available for you to use in your apps. If you need the behavior of swap two values function in your own code, you can use Swift's existing swap function rather than providing your own implementation. Type parameters. In the swap two values example here, the placeholder type t is an example of a type parameter. Type parameters specify and name a placeholder type and are written immediately after the function's name between a pair of matching angle brackets. Once you specify a type parameter, you can use it to define the type of a function's parameters, such as the a and b parameters of the swap two values function, 
or as the function's return type, or as a type annotation within the body of the function. In each case, the type parameter is replaced with an actual type whenever the function is called. In the swap two values example above, t was replaced with int the first time the function was called and was replaced with string the second time it was called. You could provide more than one type parameter by writing multiple type parameter names within the angle brackets separated by commas. Naming type parameters. In most cases, type parameters have descriptive names such as key and value in dictionary key comma value and element in array element which tells the reader about the relationship between the type parameter and the generic type or function it is used in. However, when there is not a meaningful relationship between them, it is traditional to name them using single letters such as T, U, and V, such as T in the swap two values function earlier. Note, always give type parameters upper camel case names such as T and my type parameter to indicate that they are a placeholder for a type not a value. Generic types. In addition to generic functions, Swift enables you to define your own generic types. These are custom classes, structures, and enumerations that can work with any type in a similar way to array and dictionary. This section shows you how to write a generic collection type called stack. A stack is an ordered set of values similar to an array, but with a more restricted set of operations than Swift's array type. An array allows new items to be inserted and removed at any location in the array. A stack, however, allows new items to be appended only to the end of a collection, known as pushing a new value onto the stack. Similarly, a stack allows items to be removed only from the end of the collection, known as popping a value off of the stack. Note, the concept of a stack is used by the UI Navigation Controller class to model the view controllers in a navigation hierarchy. You call the UI Navigation Controller class push view controller animated method to add or push a view controller onto the navigation stack and its pop view controller animated method to remove or pop a view controller off of the navigation stack. The stack is a useful collection model whenever you need a strict last in first out approach to managing a collection. This illustration shows the push and pop behavior for a stack. One, there are currently three values on the stack. Two, a fourth value is pushed onto the top of the stack. Three, the stack now holds four values, with the most recent one at the top. Four, the top stack item is popped. Five, after popping a value, the stack once again holds three values. Here is how to write a non-generic version of a stack, in this case for a stack of integer values. This structure uses an array property called items to store the values in the stack. Stack provides two methods, push and pop to push and pop values on and off the stack. These methods are marked as mutating because they need to modify or mutate the structure items array. The in stack type shown here can only be used with integer values, however. It would be much more useful to define a generic stack structure that can manage a stack of any type of value. Here is a generic version of the same code. Note how the generic version of stack is essentially the same as the non-generic version, but with a type parameter called element instead of an actual type of int. This type parameter is written within a pair of angle brackets, element, immediately after the structure's name. Element defines a placeholder name for a type to be provided later. This future type can be referred to as element anywhere within the structure's definition. In this case, element is used as a placeholder in three places. First, to create a property called items, which is initialized with an empty array of values of type element. Second, to specify that the push method has a single parameter called item, which must be of type element. Third, to specify that the value returned by the pop method will be a value of type element. Because it is a generic type, stack can be used to create a stack of any valid type in a Swift in a similar manner to array and dictionary. You create a new stack instance by writing the type to be stored in the stack within angle brackets. For example, to create a new stack of strings, you write stack string. Here's how stack of strings looks after pushing these four values onto the stack. Popping a value from the stack removes and returns the top value curato. Here's how the stack looks after popping its top value. 
extending a generic type. When you extend a generic type, you do not provide a type parameter list as part of the extensions definition. Instead, the type parameter list from the original type definition is available within the body of the extension, and the original type parameter names are used to refer to the type parameters from the original definition. This example extends the generic stack type to add a read-only computed property called top item, which returns the top item on the stack without popping it off the stack. The top item property returns an optional value of type element. If the stack is empty, top item returns nil. If the stack is not empty, top item returns the final item in the items array. Note that this extension does not define a type parameter list. Instead, the stack type's existing type parameter name element is used within the extension to indicate the optional type of the top item computed property. The top item computed property can now be used with any stack instance to access and query its top item without removing it. Extensions of a generic type can also include requirements that instances of the extended type must satisfy in order to gain the new functionality, as discussed in Extensions with the Generic Where Clause later. Type Constraint Syntax You write type constraints by placing a single class or protocol constraint after a type parameter's name separated by a colon as part of the type parameter list. The basic syntax for type constraints on a generic function is shown here, although the syntax is same for generic types. The hypothetical function here has two type parameters. The first type parameter, t, has a constraint that requires t to be a subclass of some class. The second type parameter, u, has a type constraint that requires u to conform to the protocol, some protocol. Type constraints. The swap two values function and the stack type can work with any type. However, it is sometimes useful to enforce certain type constraints on the types that can be used with generic functions and generic types. Type constraints specify that a type parameter must inherit from a specific class or conform to a particular protocol or protocol composition. For example, Swift's dictionary type places a limitation on the types that can be used as keys for a dictionary. As described in dictionaries, the type of a dictionary's keys must be hashable. That is, it must provide a way to make itself uniquely representable. Dictionary needs its keys to be hashable so that it can check whether it already contains a value for a particular key. Without this requirement, Dictionary could not tell whether it should insert or replace a value for a particular key, nor would it be able to find a value for a given key that is already in the dictionary. This requirement is enforced by a type constraint on the key type for dictionary, which specifies that the key type must conform to the hashable protocol, a special protocol defined in the Swift standard library. All of Swift's basic types, such as string, int, double, and bool, are hashable by default. For information about making your own custom types conform to the hashable protocol, see conforming to the hashable protocol. You can define your own type constraints when creating custom generic types, and these constraints provide much of the power of generic programming. Abstract concepts like hashable characterize types in terms of their conceptual characteristics rather than their concrete type. Type constraints in action. Here is a non-generic function called find index of string in, which is given a string value to find and an array of string values within which to find it. The find index of string in function returns an optional integer value, which will be the index of the first matching string in the array if it is found, or nil if the string cannot be found. The find index of string in function can be used to find a string value in an array of strings. The principle of finding the index of a value in an array isn't useful only for strings, however. You can write the same functionality as a generic function by replacing any mention of strings with values of some type t instead. Here's how you might expect a generic version of the find index function to be written. Note that the return type of this function is still optional int because the function returns an optional index number, not an optional value of the array. Be warned, though, this function does not compile for reasons which we will explain. This function does not compile as written here. The problem lies with the equality check if value equal equal value defined. Not every type in Swift can be compared with the equal to operator. If you create your own class or structure to represent a complex data model, for example, then the meaning of equal to for that class or structure is not something that Swift can guess for you. Because of this, 
it is not possible to guarantee that this code will work for every possible type T and an appropriate error is reported when you try to compile the code, however. All is not lost, however. The Swift standard library defines a protocol called equatable, which requires any conforming type to implement the equal to operator and the not equal to operator to compare any two values of that type. All of Swift standard types automatically support the equatable protocol. Any type that is equatable can be used safely with the find index of in function because it is guaranteed to support the equal to operator. To express this fact, you write a type constraint of equatable as part of the type parameters definition when you define the function. The single type parameter for find index of in is written as t colon equatable, which means any type t that conforms to the equatable protocol. The find index function now compiles successfully and can be used with any type that is equatable, such as double or string. Associated types. When defining a protocol, it is sometimes useful to declare one or more associated types as part of the protocol's definition. An associated type gives a placeholder name to a type that is used as part of the protocol. The actual type to use for that associated type is not specified until the protocol is adopted. Associated types are specified with the associated type keyword. Associated types in action. Here is an example of a protocol called container, which declares an associated type called item. The container protocol defines three required capabilities that any container must provide. It must be possible to add a new item to the container with an append method. It must be possible to access a count of the items in the container through a count property that returns an integer value. It must be possible to retrieve each item in the container with a subscript that takes an integer index value. This protocol does not specify how the items in the container should be stored or what type they are allowed to be. The protocol only specifies the three bits of functionality that any type must provide in order to be considered a container. A conforming type can provide additional functionality as long as it satisfies these three requirements. Any type that conforms to the container protocol must be able to specify the type of values it stores. Specifically, it must ensure that only items of the right type are added to the container, and it must be clear about the type of items returned by its subscript. To define these requirements, the container protocol needs a way to refer to the type of the elements that a container will hold without knowing what that type is for a specific container. The container protocol needs to specify that any value passed to the append method must have the same type as the container's element type and that the value returned by the container's subscript will be of the same type as the container's element type. To achieve this, the container protocol declares an associated type called item. The protocol does not define what item is, that information is left for any conforming type to provide. Nonetheless, the item alias provides a way to refer to the type of the items in a container and to define a type for use with the append method and subscript to ensure that the expected behavior of any container is enforced. Here is a version of the non-generic int stack type from generic types above adapted to conform to the container protocol. The int stack type implements all three of the container's protocol requirements and in each case wraps part of the int stack type's existing functionality to satisfy these requirements. Moreover, int stack specifies that for this implementation of container, the appropriate item to use is a type of integer. The definition of type alias item equals integer turns the abstract type of item into a concrete type of integer for this implementation of the container protocol. Thanks to Swift's type inference, you do not actually need to declare a concrete item of integer as part of the definition of int stack. Because instack conforms to all of the requirements of the container protocol, Swift can infer the appropriate item to use simply by looking at the type of the append method's item parameter and the return type of the subscript. Indeed, if you delete the type alias item equals integer line from this code, everything still works because it is clear what type should be used for item. You can also make the generic stack type conform to the container protocol. This time, the type parameter element is used as the type of the append method's item parameter and the return type of the subscript. Swift can therefore infer that element is the appropriate type to use as the item for this particular container. Extending an existing type to specify an associated type. You can extend an existing type to add conformance to a protocol as described in adding protocol conformance with an extension. This includes a protocol with an associated type. 
Swift's array type already provides an append method, a count property, and a subscript with an integer index to retrieve its elements. These three capabilities match the requirements of the container protocol. This means that you can extend array to conform to the container protocol simply by declaring that array drops the protocol. You do this with an empty extension as described in declaring protocol adoption with an extension. Array's existing append method and subscript enable Swift to infer the appropriate type to use for item, just as for the generic stack type previously. After defining this extension, you can use any array as a container. Adding constraints to an associated type. You can add type constraints to an associated type in a protocol to require that conforming types satisfy those constraints. For example, this code defines a version of container that requires the items in the container to be equatable. To conform to this version of container, the container's item type has to conform to the equatable protocol. Using a protocol in its associated types constraints. A protocol can appear as part of its own requirements. For example, here is a protocol that refines the container protocol, adding the requirement of a suffix method. The suffix method returns a given number of elements from the end of the container, storing them in an instance of the suffix type. In this protocol, suffix is an associated type, like the item type in the container example previously. Suffix has two constraints. It must conform to the suffixable container protocol, the protocol currently being defined, and its item type must be the same type as the container's item type. The constraint on item is a generic WHERE clause, which is discussed in associated types with the generic WHERE clause below. Here is an extension of the stack type from generic types previously that adds conformance to the suffixable container protocol. In this example, the suffix associated type for stack is also stack, so the suffix operation on stack returns another stack. Alternatively, a type that conforms to suffixable container can have a suffix type that is different from itself, meaning the suffix operation can return a different type. For example, here's an extension to the non-generic int stack type that adds a suffixable container conformance using stack int as its suffix type instead of int stack. Generic where clauses. Type constraints, as described in type constraints, enable you to define requirements on the type parameters associated with the generic function, subscript, or type. It can also be useful to define requirements for associated types. You do this by defining a generic WHERE clause. A generic WHERE clause enables you to require that an associated type must conform to a certain protocol or that certain type parameters and associated types must be the same. A generic WHERE clause starts with the WHERE keyword followed by constraints for associated types or equality relationships between types and associated types. You write a generic WHERE clause right before the opening curly brace of a type or function's body. This example defines a generic function called all items match, which checks to see if two container instances contain the same items in the same order. The function returns a Boolean value of true if all items match and a value of false if they do not. The two containers to be checked do not have to be the same type of container, although they can be, but they do have to hold the same type of items. This requirement is expressed through a combination of type constraints and a generic WHERE clause. This function takes two arguments called some container and another container. The some container argument is of type C1, and the another container argument is of type C2. Both C1 and C2 are type parameters for two container types to be determined when the function is called. The following requirements are placed on the function's two type parameters. C1 must conform to the container protocol. C2 must also conform to the container protocol. The item for C1 must be the same as the item for C2. The item for C1 must conform to the equatable protocol. The first and second requirements are defined in the function's type parameter list, and the third and fourth requirements are defined in the function's generic WHERE clause. These requirements mean some container is of type C1, another container is of type C2. Some container and another container contain the same type of items. The items in some container can be checked with the not equal operator to see if they are different from each other. The third and fourth requirements combine to mean that the items in another container can also be checked with the not equal operator because they are exactly the same type as the items in some container. These requirements enable the all items match function to compare the two containers, even if they are of a com different container type. The all items match function starts by checking that both containers contain the same number of items. If they contain a different number of items, there is no way they can match, and the function turns false. 
After making this check, the function iterates over all of the items in some container with a for in loop and the half open range operator. For each item, the function checks whether the item from some container is not equal to the corresponding item in another container. If the two items are not equal, then the two containers don't match and the function returns false. If the loop finishes without finding a mismatch, the two containers match and the function returns true. Here is how the all items match function looks in action. The example creates a stack instance to store string values and pushes three th strings onto the stack. The example also creates an array instance initialized with an array literal containing the same three strings as the stack. Even though the stack and the array are of a different type, they both conform to the container protocol and both contain the same types of values. You can therefore call the all items match function with these two containers as its arguments. In the example, the all items match function correctly reports that all of the items in the two containers match. Extensions with a generic where clause. You can also use a generic where clause as part of an extension. This example extends the generic stack structure from the previous examples to add an isTop method. The new isTop method first checks that the stack is not empty and then compares the given item against the stack's topmost item. If you tried to do this without a generic where clause, you would have a problem. The implementation of isTop uses the equal equal operator, but the definition of stack does not require its items to be equatable. So using the equal equal operator results in a compile time error. Using a generic where clause lets you add a new requirement to the extension so that the extension adds the isTop method only when the items in the stack are equatable. Here's how the isTop method looks in action. If you try to call the isTop method on a stack whose elements are not equatable, you will get a compile time error. You can use a generic where clause with extensions to a protocol. This example extends the container protocol from the previous examples to add a starts with method. The starts with method first makes sure that the container has at least one item, and then it checks whether the first item in the container matches this given item. This new starts with method can be used with any type that conforms to the container protocol, including the stacks and arrays used above, as long as the container's items are equatable. The generic where clause in the left example requires item to conform to a protocol, but you can also write a generic where clause that requires item to be a specific type. Here is an example. This example adds an average method to containers whose item type is double. It iterates over the items in the container to add them up and divides by the container's count to compute the average. It explicitly converts the count from int to double to be able to do floating point division. You can include multiple requirements in a generic where clause that is part of an extension, just like you can for a generic where clause that you write elsewhere. Separate each requirement in the list with a comma. You can write a generic where clause as part of a declaration that does not have its own generic type constraints when you are already working in the context of generic types. For example, you can write a generic where clause on a subscript of a generic type or on a method in an extension to a generic type. The container structure is generic, and the where clauses in this example specify what type of constraints have to be satisfied to make these new methods available on a container. This example adds an average method to container when the items are integers, and it adds an end with method when the items are equatable. Both functions include a generic where clause that adds type constraints to the generic item type parameter from the original declaration of container. If you want to write this code without using contextual where clauses, you write two extensions, one for each generic where clause. This example has the same behavior. In the version of this example that uses contextual where clauses, the implementation of average and end with are both in the same extension because each method's generic where clauses states the requirements that need to be satisfied to make that method available. Moving those requirements to the extension's generic where clauses makes the methods available in the same situations but requires one extension per requirement. Associated types with a generic where clause. You can include a generic where clause on an associated type. For example, suppose you want to make a version of container that includes an iterator, like what the sequence protocol uses in the standard library. Here was how you would write that. The generic where clause on the iterator requires that the iterator must traverse over the elements of the same item type as the container's items, regardless of the iterator's type. The make iterator function provides access to the container's iterator. For a protocol that inherits from another protocol, you add a constraint to an inherited associated type by including the generic where clause in the protocol declaration. For example, 
This code declares a comparable container protocol that requires item to conform to comparable. Generic subscripts. Subscripts can be generic and they can include generic where clauses. You write the placeholder type name inside angle brackets after subscript and you write a generic where clause right before the open and curly brace of the subscript's body. Here is an example. This extension to the container protocol adds a subscript that takes a sequence of indices and returns an array containing the items at each given index. This generic subscript is constrained as follows. The generic parameter indices in angle brackets has to be a type that conforms to the sequence protocol from the standard library. The subscript takes a single parameter indices, which is an instance of that indices type. The generic where clause requires that the iterator for the sequence must traverse over elements of type integer. This ensures that the indices in the sequence are the same type as the indices used for a container. Taken together, these constraints mean that the value passed for the indices parameter is a sequence of integers.